Now a word from Jeremy Dodge. Hello everybody, this is Lori Anderson with FreedomOutpost.com. I am a contributor for Freedom Outpost, and Freedom Outpost has always done its best to make sure and ensure that you get the truth each and every day. Um, I am making this video in response to some things that are flying around the internet stating that Operation Jade Helm 15 is not real. I am here to face-to-face -face dispute that statement. Jade Helm 15 is extremely real. It has been verified, and by the time I'm done with this video, you will have no doubt in your mind that Jade Helm 15 is extremely real. The only reason that the propaganda is going out is for the simple fact they want the American people to calm down. They want them to believe that this is not a real exercise or drill that spans across seven states. They want us to believe their lies. Will you be mastered by them? After all, Operation Jade Helm 15 is about mastering the human domain. So I'm calling them out on their lies. And I'm going to provide documents as well as audio that will prove beyond the shadow of a doubt they're trying to stop the American people from being aware of what's going on. They're trying to psychologically, by using a PSYOP, stop the truth from getting out there. While it is our responsibility, it is my responsibility as an American, as a human being, as me standing for not only myself, for my children, for my grandchildren, for my great-grandchildren, it is also my responsibility to stand for you. It is my responsibility to stand for your children. 
after this video is done, I have a specific message to Special Operations Command and the military who are going to be involved in this drill. I ask that you please listen to it. It is not an attack on any of our military. I love our military men and women. I support them 100%, but I do not support tyranny. And this is where it comes from. It comes from their leadership, not them themselves. I ask those in Spe Special Operations Command, those in law enforcement, those that are in those county commissioner's offices, would you want this done? to your children or grandchildren? Do you have anyone that you love that you don't want this done to? Do you want the people that you love? Do you want their rights taken away when you have, especially our special operations, men, women, the Green Berets, Navy SEALs? I'm an ex-military wife. I know the training that they do. I know the side of the operation. You all have worked for years to protect this country. Will you stand and protect it now by refusing to go along with this drill? I don't know what you're being told, but it's not right. And you place your lives in danger all the time overseas against the enemy. You put your family in danger just because of what you do. With that boldness, with that training, with everything that you do. Will you? Will you be bold enough to say no? Will you be bold enough to say, I refuse to do this to the American people because I will not be a part of mastering that human domain? So with that, I'm going to provide some documents. We're going to discuss these documents. We're going to discuss the audio. Just prove this with your psychological operations. As I have filed, stamped, court copies of you discussing in County Commissioner Board Operation Jade Helm which I will be sharing with the people. Stop attacking those that are standing up for the very rights you claim you took an oath to uphold. We stand not only for ourselves, we stand for your rights as well, as you will take our money for your paycheck to do these operations. Operations, U.S. Army Special Operations Command that is in question is the request to conduct realistic military training for an RMT known as Operation Jade Helm. One of the major concerning factors of Operation Jade Helm, other than our military doing mass drills across the entire um, southwest section of the United States. The participants of this operation are the U.S. Army Special Forces Command, the Green Berets, U.S. Navy SEALs, U.S. Air Force Special Operations Command, U.S. Ma Marine Corps Marine Special Operations Command, U.S. Marine Corps Marine Expeditionary Units, 82nd Airborne Division, and interagency partners. Interagency partners are also known as 
DEA, FBI, law enforcement officials. Sounds wonderful, doesn't it? The exercise locations just within Texas are supposed to be Bastrop, Smithfield, Big Springs, Cotto Lake, Coldwell, Cristobal, College Station, Dell City, El Dorado, Gilead, Junction, Leakey, Menard, Mountain Home, San Angelo, San Antonio, and Victoria. We're going to see if they actually have tried that because I have some county commissioner's records that are pretty interesting to show that they've already gotten permission from a couple of counties. So with no further ado, I will now take you to actual documents, but let's listen to the words. Let's listen to the words of the operations coordinator, or excuse me, his exact title, Mr. Thomas Mead. He is the Jade Helm Operations Planner, MSDL, and right here it is. This also includes his work phone number, his cell phone number, his email address. Feel free to contact him on this matter, especially after you hear what he has to say to the county commissioners. All righty, this is the actual recording. I just want to bring greetings from Fort Bragg, North Carolina, and uh, Lieutenant General Charles Cleveland, Commander of United States Army Special Operations Command uh, at Fort Bragg. Uh, my name's Tom Mead. I'm a retired 20-year veteran of uh, United States Army Special Forces also known as the Green Berets. With me today I have J.R. Okendo, who spent 23 years in special operations. We actually served together in Afghanistan uh, together. We have the distinct uh, privilege of being able to give back to the force still. Um, today, um, we're, we're here to uh, discuss an exercise and uh, the purpose for, for us being here today is we're seeking written uh, invitation and approval from local officials uh, to be able to conduct a realistic military training exercise within Brasses County. Um, the exercise will take place between July and September uh, of this year. Just to go into a little bit and just explain what realistic military training is. The bottom line is realistic military training is any training that's conducted off of a military installation such as Fort Hood or Fort Bliss. Um, what it does, uh, U.S. SOCOM Special Operations Command at, uh, Tam in Tampa, Florida, commanded by General Votel, uh, has put a process in place for us to ensure that we're doing the proper coordination between the Department of Defense and the local governments that we're going to be there and that they know that we're conducting activities in their in their backyard. Um, within the process, one of the biggest things is obviously the letter of invitation from local officials, from the county commissioners. Um, also, we coordinate very closely with all of our law enforcement folks. We've already met with the state DPS Yesterday I had the privilege of meeting with the sheriff and the chief deputy and explaining the exercise in thorough depth with them. Uh, so they are aware of the exercise that's going on. Um, and then also we do a um, uh, licensing agreement with everything that we do. So if we're on private property, we do uh, a licensing agreement with those that allows us to use those property uh, in that fact. Within Brasses County, the um, activities that will occur will all occur at the Teeks facility and the Riverside campus. That's what we have currently planned for uh, Brasses County. Um, so in the big scope of the thing, this is one pinpoint um, or two small pinpoints in a larger exercise. The exercise is actually an eight-week exercise taking place across seven states. As you can see up there, uh, it, it spans the whole southwest of the United States. We've also added Mississippi, and we have a group also working out of Florida. Um, 
what it's going to do for us, it's a SOCOM sponsored exercise with special forces actually executing it and Army Special Operations bringing it all together. Um, and it, what it's going to do is going to provide, in a bigger scope of thing, it's going to provide the capability to conduct unconventional warfare across the globe. Um, to put unconventional warfare into a perspective, you, you see it a couple different places up there, unconventional warfare, and I'll explain that from a historical perspective. So um, conventional warfare is troops on troops, tanks on tanks, uniform enemy against uniform en enemy is the way conventional warfare is, is generally defined. Unconventional warfare, from a historical perspective, if you think of World War II, Germany came in and they took over France. The French did not want them there. They formed the French underground. The French underground conducted activities such as subversion and sabotage. They would hit logistics lines to, uh, to, to demoralize the, the um, Germans. So what a lot of folks don't know is there were American advisors with the French underground throughout World War II assisting them in planning and conducting those types of activities. Since 1952, the United States Army Special Forces has had the charter to conduct unconventional warfare throughout the globe. The last 15 years, we have been in Afghanistan and Iraq. We've been doing more of a counterinsurgency role rather than being able to enable an insurgency across the globe. So therefore, what we're doing is we're bringing these guys back and we're we're dusting off the skills that they already have because every, every Green Beret learns unconventional warfare when he leaves the qualification course. He knows it inside and out. A lot of these guys haven't practiced it in the last few years. So we're bringing those skills back to the forefront for them. The activities that are going to occur in Brazos County will occur between August 15th and August 21st. The, the actual length of the exercise goes from about July 15th until September 11th. We'll end on September 11th and head back to home station. Who's going to be participating in this? Here in this area, in Brasses County, we'll have Army Green Berets. Army Green Berets will be doing those pinpoint operations out there at Teaks and Riverside. We'll have Navy SEALs who will be doing, conducting targets and training down in the Mississippi area. The Air Force Special Operations will be flying uh, specialized missions for us. The Marine Special Operators will be jumping into Camp Bullis doing reconnaissance in preparation to receive the 82nd Airborne Division on a large scale uh, um, airfield seizure on Camp Bullis, Bullis itself. As you can see from the exercise locations within Texas itself, uh, we are covering a very large area, all the way from Caddo Lake, all the way out to Sierra Blanca, uh, and as far north as uh, Big Spring and as far south as Goliad. So we're kind of filling the whole state, but those are very small pinpoint things. In each one of those locations, there'll be no more than about 60 folks that will be there in, in those locations. Here, particularly in Brasses County, as I said before, they'll be at Riverside and they'll be at the Teeks Fire Field. Why did we choose Texas? Number one, we've done exercises within Texas. We've been doing them here in Texas for years. Uh, the, the, uh, one of the things that we have always found about coming to Texas, and I know JR and I, 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 if you count all the mileage that he and I have done, we've probably traveled back and forth across the state of Texas probably about 10 times already uh, since uh, July of last year. Um, but we have not ran into anyone who is not willing to help us out because they understand, Texans understand that we're training these guys to go out and be able to prepare our airmen, soldiers, and sailors to be able to go out and do the business of, of the United States military across the globe. And we appreciate that, that um, Texans are very supportive of everything. The exercise is going to hone their advanced skills. It's going to cause them to interact with other agencies that they don't normally in, uh, interact with. 
Um, and then we, we need areas of large areas of undeveloped property from the bigger perspective of the exercise uh, to be able to um, practice some of the things that they'll have to do overseas, such as operating outside the normal support mechanisms. In the scenario that we have built, um, they cannot get the normal once a week resupply of food or resupply of water. They're going to have to, they're going to have to work with locals, which are role players that we have, uh, local, local folks that have agreed to help us out as a role player or hire role players to be able to obtain some of the things that they need throughout the exercise. What, what can you expect in Brasses County? Um, There'll be increased aircraft at night. Uh, we'll be bringing in some helicopters uh, over on the Teaks facility in Riverside. We'll also be bringing in um, a fixed wing aircraft, a C-130, into Easterwood. Um, so with that being said, there may be some noise complaints that, that come along with that. Um, all the activities out there will occur between about 11 p.m. and about 4 a.m. Um, the personnel that will be out there, they will have weapons, but they'll, be have, they'll have simunitions, so uh, the uh, military version of the uh, paintballs. Uh, and then we will coordinate directly with uh, the law enforcement, and the sheriff will be privy to everything that we're doing out there, and we actually invite the law enforcement if they choose to have officers out there on station or in the area to be able to um, uh, respond to constituent reports or as well as the dispatcher being notified to be able to field some of those calls as well. Safety. The first thing, the, our number one priority at United States Army Special Operations Command is safety. Uh, not only for our exercise com uh, participants, but also for the civilians. So some of the things that we do along with that is the communication with the law enforcement. We have medics that are assigned to each unit that will be able, that will be moving with them. They each have at least two, and plus we will also have an additional uh, senior medical personnel who will be on the ground to be able uh, to, to immediately respond. Uh, we'll coordinate with the Life Flight and the local medical facilities to understand what they have available uh, at their facilities should we uh, have a, a mishap. Um, we'll have an exercise support team and then one of the big things as well that we've done throughout North Carolina um, because North Carolina we've been running an exercise that is similar but different from this exercise and I say that from the respect that the exercise is only a two-week exercise in North Carolina. It's run six times per year. That exercise um, is the final exam for a Green Beret before he is qualified as a Green Beret. The R exercise obviously is eight weeks long. Everybody who will be participating out here will be a fully qualified Special Forces Soldier, Navy SEAL, or Marine Special Operator. What they've done in North Carolina is our public affairs office is very involved. They do newspaper ads and they also run radio spots to announce that the exercise is going to occur. So that's where we'll engage the, the public affairs officer to get that messaging out. So uh, one of the things that we'll, we'll need to identify is the local radio stations be able to put that ad on there that, that that exercise is going to happen during these dates. At this time, if there's any questions or concerns, um, I'm, I, I can field some of those. But I tell everybody, I know that the commissioners have, have the packet that I provided. The most important page that y'all, excuse me, how do I go back? <laughs> I hit it once. Got a little happy. That's the most important page that I can give you right there. That has myself and uh, mine and uh, JR's contact information, um, also our government project lead, and the public affairs officer's uh, contact information. Um, if you have any further questions, you come up with something, an additional questions. 
uh, please, please contact us. Please contact public, us. Affairs. public affairs should be able to answer just about all of your questions. What would be the number of, of actual participants you'll have here during that time? Um, oh, for for Teats in Riverside, it's a specialty. It's a special mission. Uh, there, nobody will be living here. They will be coming in from basically Louisiana, flying in here with helicopters and uh, doing uh, surgical strikes on particular uh, specific apparatuses at the Teats location where they have the rail train, and also on the Riverside there next to the airfield, they have a warehouse there. So basically, no one will be staying here in Brasses County. They will be coming in doing the hit and extracting. Uh, time on ground would be maybe 15 to 20 minutes of exposure, and then that's it. Then we're done. Can we recommend some places to you to hit? <laughs> you know, every county that we have briefed has, uh, have, has done that for us also. <laughs> or, or maybe places our people. <laughs> I think the biggest uh, uh, impact would be noise from helicopters coming in. Um, and, but like I said, it's going to be a span of no more than 30 minutes. And that's why we put it over towards uh, Eastwood and the Riverside, which is away from the population. And, and uh, so we, we shouldn't have anything out of the ordinary from that particular facility. Now, we will have a support staff that comes in probably a few days prior to the activity to be able to make sure everything is laid on, everything is set for, for the exercise. And then they'll probably stay a couple of days after the uh, exercise to, to make sure everything was good, replace what we need to replace, um, and uh, finish coordination. As Shannon said, that's a little bit of uh, OPM uh, coming into uh, your uh, uh, into your uh, county. And you mentioned having volunteers, local. Yes, ma'am. Those are those are in some of the other locations that we're going to be in. Not here. Not here at. Um, uh, in Brasses County. The, the folks that we'll have here as the opposing force that will be on those targets are our military folks that we will have uh, from a liability uh, standpoint. Okay, so as you can hear from Mr. Thomas Mead himself, they have intentions of blowing things up. They also have some sort of plan with something to do with a train. You have heard out of his own mouth, as I've scrolled down with this document, this document is extremely real. This is not acceptable. And I am going to go over some more information for you so that this cannot be disputed. Each and everything that I provide in this video you will have access to, I will make sure of it. Because unlike those individuals who are lying and trying to make Operation Jade Helm 15 not real, I refuse to lie. I will not lie about it. I will do everything in my power to make sure the American people know the truth. Okay, so one of the first things that I'm going to tackle, there is um, an article posted by MySouthTex.com, and this was posted three months ago, as you can see. It was posted by Koi Salvik, Advanced Guard Editor, and um, I'd like to thank this individual for covering this three months ago before the American population actually knew about it, because this also helped us to, to be able to confirm that these were not fraudulent documents and, and we thank you for that. So they reported the Galliard County Commissioner's Court unanimously approved a request by the U.S. Army Special Operations Command to conduct military exercises in the county for a month long period in 2015. Thomas Mead, who is the individual you just heard by the way, Thomas Meade, the operations planner for the U.S. Army's Jade Helm Realistic Military Training, spoke to the court during its December the 8th meeting and told commissioners that 60 to 65 military personnel will be involved in the exercises, which will be conducted between July the 15th 
and September the 15th at a privately owned land. This allows our soldiers to get better training, Meade said. You can only do so much in a military environment. You don't really get a true interaction with the public. Jade Helm is an eight-week joint military and interagency unconventional warfare exercise that will be conducted in Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, California, Nevada, Utah, and Colorado. And as you also heard, which was not reported in this one, on the recording of Mr. Thomas Meade, Mississippi and Florida are also involved. Jade Helm is an the locations are also including Victoria County. We have Army Green Berets, Navy SEALs, Marine Special Operations Command, the 82nd Airborne Division, and we also have some of our interagency partners, such as the DEA, FBI, and Joint Personal Personnel Recovery Agency that will be working with us. Meade said the operations will be held on property owned by T. Michael O'Connor. We're getting these guys back into the woods, Meade said. We're getting them back into the field to make it hard for them. Meade said the county residents will see an in increased aircraft in the area at night and warned county officials that there may be an increase in noise complaints. Well, of course, he just said, in his audio, they were going to be blowing stuff up. Just a thought. Some participants will be carrying weapons with blank ammunition, and some may be wearing civilian attire while driving civilian vehicles. According to me, the economic impact to Gullion County is estimated $150,000. Well, it's always good to get that free money without letting the people know. This individual, thank you um, for writing this article. However, the people in mass were not aware of this operation. Um, that's clear by the way that the reaction has, has come across the net um, in mass in resistance to this. We are not your psychological operations chess pieces. We pay your paychecks. Now, let's address that $150,000. Well, that will help that little, that town of $150,000 coming in. How much does that operation cost? Because the $150,000 is coming from the taxpayers. Well, how much more is coming from the taxpayers? Um, to do this operation. I will address another issue with a different. Here are the county commissioners for Gullied County. And you'll see that in just one second. There we go. These are the individuals you need to get a hold of. You need to tell them you don't approve of this. This is not okay. This is a psychological operation in my opinion, yes. However, let's not kid ourselves. Drills, especially many times um, lately, have gone live. There's no excuse for our military training on private land, none. And the only ones that this individual quoted were Special Operations Command, Navy SEALs, Green Berets. They don't need that little training and you pretending like they need to educate themselves on it. They are highly qualified, highly trained. So we're not buying that one. The county commissioners of Gullion, Texas, that were so nice to unanimously approve. The county judge is PT or Pout Calhoun. Phone number 361-645-3377. Precinct 1 Commissioner Julian Flores. Precinct 2 Commissioner Alonzo Morales. Precinct 3 Commissioner Ronald Bailey. Precinct 4 Commissioner David Burns. 
runs, excuse me. As you can see on the screen, I provided their phone numbers and their emails for you. So now I will go to a different page showing that this is not only happening in Gilead County. The Standard Times on November the 1st, 2014, before this broke out in, main, in, in the main internet web of alternative media, they printed West Texas Briefs. And when you scroll down, it says El Dorado, right there, military exercise expected in the area. Sutter County commissioners received word of a military exercise Jade Helm 15 scheduled for July through September the 15th of next year, according to a report from El Dorado Success. The exercise will take part in seven western states, including Texas, New Mexico, Colorado, Arizona, Utah, Nevada, and California. Part of the Texas operation will take place in and around Schlinner County with home base at the Steve Blaylock Ranch. So, this shows you the history that, yes, this has been openly known, just individuals weren't aware on a mass scale. This is a screenshot that was sent to me uh, of the Howard County Commissioners, which no longer is on the internet, but I do have a screenshot of it. As you can see, NewsWest9.com also covered this. It says, Howard County Commissioners discuss rail park military training. Mark posted on March the 9th, 2015. Howard County Commissioners talked about several issues during their meeting on Monday. One of the topics discussed was an endorsement for a proposed new rail and industrial park. Could that be what what Mr. Mead was talking about when he was talking about the train? I don't know, maybe. One of the topics discussed was an endorsement for a proposed new rail and industrial park. The rail park would cover about 600 acres of land on North Moss Lake Road, just east of Big Spring. Commissioners did express concerns over additional damage on the roads in that area. The Service Transportation Board must still give their approval on the project before it moves forward. Commissioners also gave the green light to the Military Special Operations Command training exercise. The project, also known as Jade Helm 15, would take place in the county this summer. People involved in the training would participate oper in operations, including Green Berets and various airborne operations. WTAW News Talk 1620 covered that the Green Berets are coming to Aggieland. This was covered February the 26th, 2015. This August, Brazos County will be invaded by the Green Berets. How convenient they even have the symbolism for Jade Helm mastering that human domain, which we will discuss in just a little bit. The spokesman Tom Mead from Fort Bragg, North Carolina says it is part of Jade Helm 15, an exercise involving multiple military branches that will take place in seven states over an eight-week period. The Green Berets will be freshening up on their skills in unconventional warfare. Meade, who served 20 years in Army Special Forces, says it is similar to the United States helping the French underground after Germany captured France during World War II. Meade said training will be based on the Texas A&M Riverside campus. 
There will also be increased aircraft activity at night in and out of Easterwood Airport. Other Texas locations for the mass training includes Caldwell and Bastrop. Meade says the other participants include the Navy SEALs, Air Force, Marine Special Operations, and the 82nd Airborne. Now, I just want to show you in another link, which is amazing, because this is before it broke in alternative media everywhere. So, if you can see right here, it has the realistic military training presentation, which is what you just heard with Mr. Thomas Meade. This right here says, click here to read the background information presented to the Brazos County Commissioners. Well, let's see what that is. I'll be daggone, look at that. It is that same U.S. Special Operations Command, Jade Helm 15, which has now hit the flames of the people of the United States of America because we refuse to be guinea pigs. Right here, as you can see, I'm scrolling down and I am scrolling down for one reason only so you can see it is the exact same document that the alternative media got out there, got to the people and are concerned for the safety of our citizens when mainstream media refuses to cover this egregious violation of our rights. Jade Helm, master the human domain. I will go into more detail because I did find some really interesting information on mastering the human domain and what Special Operations Command appears to believe about mastering that human domain. All right, before I get to mastering the human domain, I would like to show you um, an official agenda for March the 9th, 2015. The following items of business will be discussed and possible action taken in regular meeting of the Howard County Commissioner's Court to be held on Monday, March the 9th, 2015, in the Howard County Courtroom on the third floor of the Howard County Courthouse. The meeting will commence at 10 a.m. The individuals who are present, Catherine G. Wiseman, Drew Lopez, Teresa Thomas, Donna Wright, Brian Klinksek, Mike Avriette. Catherine Wiseman is going to have these points taken up. Presentation and request to perform U.S. Military Special Operations Command Training Exercise. Jade Helm in Howard County, July 2, September 2015. Reimbursement for translator, county court. Texas Department of Family and Protective Services Amendment for contract, 23939162, and Lone Star Railroad Incorporated Proposed Industrial Park. The rest of this is actually, you can read it yourself, I just wanted to show that, yes, Jade Helm was addressed in the Howard County courtroom by the county commissioners on March 9th. This right here states, you can see the file stamp. It was posted March 6th, 2015 at 9.22 a.m. Donna Wright, the county clerk of Howard County, and the deputy that signed her name is Nancy Sink. Down at the bottom, you have Catherine Wiseman, the county judge of Howard County, Texas. Her signature, as well as the County Court of Texas's seal on this document. Okay, so when we look further into mastering the human domain, we need to research and find out what or how Special Operations Command thinks. What, what is mastering the human domain in their mind? Um, 
I have found this document. It's USA WC Civilian Research Product Project. Institutionalizing Interdependence, U.S. Army Special Operations Forces, Conventional Forces, and it is called No Turning Back. It obviously was by Lieutenant Colonel Promotable Michael D. Franks of the United States Army and Professor, and Professor Robert A. Connolly, who was the project advisor. It does state in here that the CRP is submitted in partial fulfillment of requirements of the Senior Service College Fellowship Program. The U.S. Army War College is accredited by Commission on Higher Education of the Middle States Association of Colleges and Schools, located at 3624 Market Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19104, and their phone number is 215-662-5606. They do have that plausible deniability under this, under one part, because they wrote, the views expressed in this student academic research paper are those of the author and do not reflect the official policy or position of the Department of the Army, Department of Defense, or the U.S. government. U.S. Army War College, Carlisle Barracks, Pennsylvania, 17013. Once we get deeper into this document, I think you'll see that it's a little bit different than what that's being portrayed. Title, Institutionalizing Interdependence, U.S. Army Special Operations Forces, Conventional Forces, No Turning Back. Report date was May the 1st, 2013. There are 25 pages, and I would suggest you download this and read this. It's very disturbing. It's a very phenomenally put together, but it is very disturbing. And I will show you um, my opinions. I'm going to skip through some of this and not read all of it, obviously. But I'm going to go to the part that speaks about mastering the human domain. Because I think that is extremely important, especially since Jade Helm 15, there insignia underneath is mastering the human domain. So I think it is extremely important that we read this, that we look at this, that we ask questions, that we stand up. When is enough going to be enough? Okay, uniquely American way of special operations. Crucial to understanding the interdependence between conventional forces and special operations forces is an understanding of how special operations forces conducts its missions. There are four ways that special operations forces operates, which Lieutenant General Cleveland, commander of the United States Army Special Operations Command, characterizes as uniquely an American way of special operations war fighting in describing special warfare and surgical strike capabilities. So let's go down to the human domain. There we go. Page 14. You will be supplied this document. You can download it, read it for yourself. Human domain. Concurrent with the efforts to add a seventh war fighting function is the discussion within the profession of arms over adding a human domain to the current domain. Construct within joint doctrine. The term and associated dialogue is used in various publications to describe the human nature of conflict. As General Martin Dempsey poses the question in the capstone for joint operations, how will future joint forces with constrained resources protect United States national interest against increasingly capable enemies in an uncertain, complex, rapidly changing, and increasingly transparent world? Major General Sacklock and Brigadier General Grigsby address how viewing 
this challenge through the lens of human domain will contribute to answering the chairman's question. Quote, the human domain is the totality of the physical, cultural, and social environments that influence human behavior to the extent that success of any military operation or campaign depends on the application of unique capabilities that are designed to fight and win population-centric conflicts. It is a critical and complementary concept to the recognized domains of land, air, maritime space, and cyberspace. This concept and the addition of a human domain are important because the other domains insufficiently address the human dimension of conflict. Although it is deemed a critical component to land power, further, the addition of a human domain, similar to a seventh warfighting function, will ensure that we are providing a framework to support and employ the complementary capabilities of special operations and conventional forces. The acknowledgement of the human domain is an important step as Sun Tao recognized. For one to win 100 victories in 100 battles is not the acme of skill. To subdue an enemy without fighting is the acme of skill although perhaps a loose interpretation of Sun Chao. I believe one key to subduing an enemy without fighting is, better, is a better understanding of the human nature of conflict and building systems within the doctrine, organizations, training, material, leadership, education, personnel, and personnel facilities. D-O-T-M-L-P-S. Construct of the Joint Capabilities Integration Development System, or the JCIDS, to address shortfalls. Let's get another quote. The rising velocity of human interaction through the internet and social media makes influencing human behavior the centerpiece of military strategy. The human is absent in our current doctrine, period. We don't talk about it. Do we have a gap in our strategic thinking? Wow. You know, General Robert Cohn, the commanding general of the U.S. Army Training and Doctrine Command, commented, saying, quote, The central figure of the last 10 years of war is the importance of the human domain. We paid to learn the language, culture, tribes, and fidelity in terms of network targeting, and we must place structural imperatives so that we learn those lessons and add them to our doctrine. One effort to explore the human domain in a more detailed manner within DOTMLPF is recently is a recently commissioned study by the United States Army Special Operations Command to the Rand Area Center. Keep that thought. I have a document you will say with that also. This six-month-long study is titled The Human Domain. Wow. Considerations and implications for the U.S. Army Special Operations Command. The research will specifically address how will future joint forces with constrained resources protect United States national interests against increasingly capable enemies in an uncertain, complex, rapidly changing, and increasingly transparent world. You know... Many people try to say this is for our national security. We know that's a lie. We know it's a lie. Don't tell me you're for national security when you're part of the Department of Homeland Security and you are escorting criminal aliens across the United States of America and dropping them off. Don't tell me that you are for the Homeland Security when you are releasing murderers that are already in jail onto the streets because it doesn't fit your narrative. When 
will enough be enough and when will you come to a point that you can't be bought because when you use that excuse well it's my job and I have to follow orders that's exactly what it is it's because if you don't you may lose your job which is your paycheck so you're being bought to betray everything this country stands for. You're being paid to eventually target your own family. And for that, I will stand up. I will provide proof. Because whether I know you or not, I do care. So for now, this is Lori Anderson, contributor for FreedomOutpost.com, standing with all of the alternative media that have reported this truth. I know that Resurrect the Republic Radio was attacked verbally on Facebook by an individual who claimed he was ex-Special Operations Command and that the document was a fraud. It is apparent and I have proven and will give you links and access to the document beyond the shadow of a doubt this is real. Please wake up, contact your county commissioners, contact your mayors, contact your governors, contact your state representatives. Why did they approve this without the people's approval? Will this turn into another Boston? I don't know. But even if it's done under the farce of a drill, I would ask that each one of our military that are going to be involved in this drill, and these are not low-level military, be under no illusions. These are special operations, Green Berets, Navy SEALs, 82nd Airborne. These people already know exactly what they're doing. This is not because they need to hone their skills. That was also in the audio recording. Mr. Thomas Mean made very clear these were going to be already trained individuals that have passed their tests for the Green Berets or the SEALs. So be under no illusion. Best case scenario, the PSYOP is to desensitize the people. I don't even want to go into the worst case scenario. I'm reaching out to our military guys. I love you guys both our military men and women. You have been treated very badly by this administration. You have been targeted by this administration. They have allowed veterans to die sitting on the waiting list, waiting for health care. Do you think anything you do for them that they're going to care? They're not. We do. So if you really want to stand for the people, if you really want to be heroes of the day, refuse and stand down. Refuse to be a part of this drill. I hope everything I've said goes to heart. I hope you do your research. I will provide the documents and we will not allow psychological operations to be cast among the American people for the people to think this is a fake. It is very real. And I, for one, I refuse to turn my back on my people. 
not for any tyrant in the world. So the option is in the people's hands as well as in the hands of the special operations individuals in Special Operations Command. Please do the right thing. I've known a lot of you over the years. I have always had high respect for you. Show me. Don't tell me. Show me that what you truly fight for is for us. Show me that you refuse to turn your back on the Constitution and on your people and you turn your back on unlawful orders. Posse comitatus cannot be written away just because of the NDAA. If you are true in your heart with your oath, and I know most of you military are, stand up with the people, beside the people, and for the people. And the way that you can do that is to stand down. Thank you for listening to me. God bless you and stay safe.